I'm sure we all know the rough story, the former football running back and act... Uh. Today's video brought to you by Surfshark. More on them in a bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your host. Welcome, welcome to the show. What happens here? Danny writes me a script. I'm going to read it, maybe add some reactions if I feel like it almost certainly will. It's kind of the format of this show. This is, uh, what is it? Oh, the most famous celebrity trials. You could see that I go into these things very, very well prepared. Uh, obviously, I can see the first one here, the subtitle, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. And it's like, this is this is not timely. I probably asked Daddy to write this when this was timely and I've been busy and I've got to it by the time this is published. This will be like last year's news or something crazy. Anyway, let's just get into it. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Sam, who does the editing on this channel. Let's go. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. It says something about Johnny Depp's waning acting career that the recent trial in Virginia must be the most dramatic, humorous, compelling, and by far the most popular piece of entertainment that he's appeared in for the last 15 years. Wait, wait. Daddy, daddy, mate. Pirates of the Caribbean. Amazing. No, that, 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 that's a joke. That's a joke. People love that Pirates of the Caribbean, though. Isn't that like one of the highest grossing movies of all time? Like that, that series? And there's like 17 of them or something? I've seen the first one. It was fine, and I didn't see any of the others because I don't need that much piracy in my life. Ah, you're afraid to get wet. Other than maybe the piracy of the movies. Not really. Don't do that. You've been warned. Sam, roll it. They're coming for you if you pirate. They're not. <laughs> But it does seem odd that such opposing outcomes emerge from either side of the stranger tides of the Atlantic. But a bub bub the result didn't exactly go Depp's way in the UK when he filed a defamation lawsuit in 2020 against the British tabloid rag, The Sun. The newspaper ran an article which labelled Depp a wife beater following allegations from his ex-wife actress Amber Heard that Depp had been verbally and physically abusive towards her in the latter stages of their crumbling marriage. The Sun of you learns nothing from Blade Race. But that, that, that. You know what I'm saying? Just be like Johnny, Johnny Depp. Allegedly. Allegedly is a wife beater. Just throw that in there, the sun, and you'll be fine. Not legal advice. The sun probably has lawyers. Then why do they do this? <laughs> what are you doing, the sun? This is the UK. The press can't say whatever they want without, like, consequences. We don't have that American... I don't know how it works. The Americans, they're always like, freedom of the press! Yes! And in the UK, we're like, yeah, yeah, no. No. <laughs> The UK's freedom of the press for, like, a leading, developed nation is embarrassingly bad. Nope, nope, stop talking, go to jail. Huh? In that instance, the judge found 12 of the 14 alleged incidences of violence against her to be substantially true, and the son walked away smiling. By the time Depp decided to have another go in front of an American jury in 2022, his career had hit close to rock bottom. He claimed that Disney now refused to cast him in any future projects, and had been forced to resign from his ongoing role in the lucrative Fantastic Beasts movie franchise, as Warner Brothers felt that having a proven wife beater in the cast wasn't a great look for fantasy films involving talking pufferfish and moon calves. I have not... I, it's pretty I know this is like major news, but I don't actually know. He, he, he lost in the UK and then he won in the States. So does he? Did he actually beat his wife? I don't even know. I didn't follow it closely enough. But if he did, it does seem that, you know, okay, fair enough. There's, there's definitely going to be some, something in that contract that says, yo, 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 Johnny, if you beat your wife, this contract could be terminated. He'll be like, I'd never beat my wife. <laughs> All of this is alleged and my speculation and my personal opinion. Of course, because apparently Johnny Depp's got amazing lawyers. Or was it more like Amber Heard's lawyers were just a bit shat? In a stunning turn of events, a superhero is being sued. This time around, Depp was suing Heard for $50 million over an opinion piece she wrote for the Washington Post in which she claimed that she'd been a victim of domestic violence. Unless you've been hiding under a rock for the last few months, you'll know how this one panned out. Heard won just one of her three counterclaims and was awarded $2 million after the jury found that Depp's lawyer had made a false and defamatory statement to the Daily Mail. Well, in that case, I guess she just owes him $48 million. And also, she's not rich, is she? She's just like a... I mean... She is a celebrity, but like a periphery celebrity, right? She's not actually the one 
getting the f- she's not an actress or anything is she i don't think so but look she's not an actress on the same level that depp is or an actor sorry i i think we just used to we're, we're supposed to use the term just actor these days and i think i brought up previously that i don't know <laughs> actress is a cool one <laughs> like why well, get rid of that one it sounds cool <sighs> don't know but depp won all three i'm not an actress so how can i comment but Depp won all three of his claims and ended up pocketing a total of $10.4 million in damages. Oh, never mind. Sorry, I thought he sued her for 50, but I guess he just got 10, so what, we'll just call it 8.4? Shall we, Amber? <laughs> ah! The whole circus was televised and streamed on social media to an audience of billions. An opinion. Billions? Watch this? God damn! An opinion poll suggested that more Americans were interested in the celebrity court drama than the invasion of the Ukraine, which, oh boy, is that depressing. And, I mean, not the invasion of the war in Ukraine. I mean, of course, that's depressing. But the fact that more people are watching Amber Heard and Johnny Depp's trial about some that who the cares. My dog stepped on a bee. <laughs> went to okay. bed. And the six-week drama certainly threw up some odd revelations, including the allegation that Amber had purposefully defecated on Depp's bed, leading to the rise of the hashtags Amber Turd and Me Poo. They're good, though, aren't they? Those are Those are very, very clever. Very clever poo jokes. Amber did what all of us have done in that situation. Blame the dog. Danny, all of us have... N- <laughs> very few people have been in the situation of shitting in their bed. Or is that just me? Never shit the bed. And I thought me along with 99% of other people, but apparently not. <laughs> We also heard the catchphrase, objection, hearsay, about 30,000 times, including one comical situation in which hers only got a bit carried away and immediately objected to his own question. <laughs> that is some top-level incompetence right there. Well, uh, objection, hearsay. Wait, you, you asked the question. Oh, oh. Next question. Okay, you said it's stained of... Oh, what a loser! Good. But it's clear that the court of public opinion heavily favored Depp from day one as the hashtag justice for Johnny Depp. As the hashtag justice for Johnny Depp generated 19 billion views, Heard was widely mocked and branded a lying sociopath. A petition to stop the actress from appearing in the forthcoming Aquaman sequel. Oh, I'm sorry, she is an actress, but she's just not that notable. I don't think I've ever seen her in anything. Maybe I have, but I don't remember her. Like, you see Johnny Depp in a movie, and you're like, that's Johnny Depp! You see Amber Heard in a movie, and you're like, did she used to be married to Elon Musk or something like that? That's surely, or was it his girlfriend or something? Who cares? I don't care. Do you care? You probably do. Statistically, you probably care. Who the gives a shit? Why am I even making this video? <laughs> views, Simon. You're making this video for views. That's what you do. It's called business, baby. Sometimes I'll start a sentence. And I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. That's surely got to be more people than are willing to go and see the damn movie. The only problem with Aquaman 2 is that Vincent Chase isn't going to be doing it. It has to be said that Heard often made it difficult for anyone to believe a word she was saying in court. She would be sobbing uncontrollably when getting grilled by Deb's legal team, but appeared to snap right out of it when there was a pause in the questioning, say, for another objection over here, say. <laughs> This is, I mean, surely, if you're, like, you know the cameras don't stop rolling, Amber, right? You know, it's not, they're not just recording when you're speaking. It's not like a movie set, Amber. (laughs) They're on all the time. How small is your brain? Allegedly. Yeah, when the attention was put back on her, she would take this as a cue to instantly slip back into a state of utter distress. All that was missing was someone shouting, CUT! An action from the gallery. And then there was the odd moment when she started randomly talking about how a dog once stepped on a bee. What the f*** are you doing? <laughs> Some that but who the f*** cares? My dog stepped on a bee. We went to okay. bed. This isn't story time with Amber Heard. It's a f***ing court and you're getting sued for $50 million. Which you don't have, allegedly. She almost slips into sobbing mode again for this anecdote until she pulls back at the last second and when she realizes it's not appropriate. Is she acting? Because people think of sad, you know, to, to well up those tears when they're acting. They'll think of sad stories. You know, they'll think of sad moments in their life. And she'll be like, oh, just think of that time with the bee, Amber. Think of that time with and the tears come. And she's like, I've summoned the tears. I should not be speaking these thoughts out loud. <laughs> Idiot, allegedly. Not the bees! Ah! 
Some critics have suggested that it was her who stepped on the bee, but the poor dog copped the blame again. Ah, ah. The final verdict took many legal experts by complete surprise, and it's incredibly rare that an almost identical case, based on essentially the same question of whether Amber Heard was telling the truth, got very different results in the UK and the US. Apparently, in the UK, we're a bit more gullible. This could partly be because Depp's team were given the opportunity in the US courtroom to turn the tables on her to make a case to the jury that she was the real abusive partner in the tempestuous relationship. In contrast, the UK trial was dealt with solely by a judge who refused to consider anything that wasn't directly relevant to the matter of whether her herself was the victim of domestic abuse. And both of these systems are totally fine. I do find it a bit weird that there's juries in civil cases in America, because it seems like an enormous waste of time. Like, judges are really competent at stuff. They've been doing this their whole career, and it's like a company comes and the judge decides. Boom. Whereas in the UK, US, everyone's like doing jury duty and shit, and like there's courts doing like all sorts of stuff, and there's juries and lawyers explaining shit. And it's like, it seems like so theatrical. Just be like, just have the judge be like, bang, decision made, get out. Easy. Like, I get, you know, you can have a jury of your peers and stuff when you're being sentenced to, to murder or like serious crimes. Most of the time, just have a judge do it. Come on. The judge believed that Heard was telling the truth. The US jury was convinced that she was lying. It's been argued that there were no real winners here as a toxic and mutually abusive relationship with issues on both sides has been so vividly exposed to the world. But I'm not so sure about that. For starters, well, Johnny Depp is up eight million dollars. And I strongly suspect that, well, he's still got to collect, hasn't he, Danny? And I strongly suspect that we've now got more chance of seeing him in three more parts of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies than we have of Amber Heard playing a significant role in Aquaman 2. Fair play. So look, have you ever been out there in the real world using your laptop? I don't know, maybe you're in a Starbucks and you're like, ooh, free Starbucks Wi-Fi. Hmm, that sounds fast and tempting. But no, what if that's been set up by a internet hacker? Apparently they can create something called a honeypot, and then you're like, you're logging into your internet banking and shit, and you're doing all this stuff, and that guy's just set up a fake Wi-Fi that you think Starbucks, but he's really a dodgy guy living in the apartment upstairs, and he's stealing all your shit, stuff like that. Well, look, don't sweat it, because today's sponsor Surfshark will absolutely be able to help you out with that. Whenever I travel anywhere, or honestly, whenever I leave the house, and I'm on my laptop on some public Wi-Fi, um, I'm always like, well, just fire up Surfshark, because it's, it's just there in the background. It's always working. Tickety-boo. Easy does it. Also, I mean, it keeps you safe. Did I mention that? <laughs> it protects you from those bad people in the apartment upstairs. But the main thing I use Surfshark for is increasing my streaming options. I was literally listening to a podcast a few days ago, and the host of said podcast was saying how he can't get The Office. He's like, they don't have The Office on Netflix, and he had to subscribe to some new streaming service. And I'm like, what are you talking about, mate? I've heard you advertise VPNs before. You're obviously not using those VPNs, because if you use that VPN to jump over to Europe, you'd find out that The Office is on Netflix Europe, because I'm watching it. I'm, I'm working my way through The Office US first time, never seen it before. It's amazing. Um, it's on European Netflix, Czech Netflix, apparently. Just completely every season easy does it. So just fire up your VPN if you're in America and you'll find that you'll get new streaming options, not just on Netflix, on the other services as well. And uh, for me, I jump over to America because then when I can't get The Office, there's tons of other stuff that I can get as well, which is uh, obviously it's the best of both worlds, isn't it? What else with Surfshark? Oh, the shopping thing. Say, so have you ever been you buying a flight and then you come back to look at that same flight and it's more expensive? That's because they're spying on you or something like that and they know you really want it. Fire up the VPN, open an incognito browser, book it at the original price. Bada bing, bada boom, it's Surfshark. Honestly, what more could you need in your life other than Surfshark and Brainblaze? Go to surfshark.deals forward slash blaze and enter the promo code blaze for 83% off and three months for free. And antivirus for free. Shit. That's a deal, isn't it? And now back to today's video. Michael Jackson and the people of California is a question that still generates fierce discussion today. Was the king of pop a serial child molester? Apparently that documentary that was on Netflix or whatever it was, everyone who sees that is like, he was, wasn't he? He was, he was, he was, he was. Oh God, he was. I don't know, I haven't seen that documentary yet. It's like one of those things where it's like, oh my God, do I really want to watch a documentary about child molestation? It's like, no. <laughs> God, no. It's like, I don't like watching narcos because they're killing too many people's families. Like, we'll, I'll watch a TV show with my wife and it'll be like, oh man, I don't like the ones about like Juarez because they're always murdering their families. It's too stressful. Can we watch something else? I started re-watching Breaking Bad and I was like, oh my God, this is, this is too stressful now. He's like murdering a child with a sick, well, why Walter? <laughs> Now I just want to watch the reruns of The Office. Come on. 
Michael Jackson didn't always put up a convincing argument to the contrary. When he was accused of child molesting a young Geordie Chandler in 1993, he agreed to pay the family a settlement rather than fight to clear his name. And although he denied any wrongdoing in the settlement, he was happily enough to pay a total out of $23 million. And the widow's, what's that, gonna be like $40 million today? Good f***ing lord, mate. With the family's lawyers trousering around $5 million of that, it's good to be a lawyer, isn't it? Like, I'm watching that Goliath, which is one of those shows that borders on being too stressful. Like, that season with the drug dealers was way too stress. I don't know, like, drug dealers are f***ing horrible. They're always, like, shooting people and, and, like, in the head and murdering their families. You're like, oh, I don't like it. Um, but Goliath, what, how did I get onto Goliath? What the f*** am I talking about? We're talking about trying. Yeah. Like an improv conversation. N improvisation. Those lawyers make some bank. Like in this new season that I'm watching, the new season is like a year old. And they're like suing someone for like, they got a settlement of like 600 million or 900 million dollars. And I'm like, is the, law is the law firm taking a third of that? Because holy sh That is absolutely ridic. Euless. Phil Collins later noted that if he had ever been falsely accused of such an appalling crime, he would have spent his very last cent on defending his name, rather than richly rewarding the accusers. Yeah, it, it does it does seem a little bit odd, doesn't it? It does seem a little bit like there's gotta be a reason for that settlement, doesn't there? I speculate myself, allegedly. Jackson was still splashing money around in 2003 when he posted $3 million in bail after being arrested on suspicion of abusing 13-year-old cancer patient. What the f***? <laughs> I didn't know this one. Gavin Arvisa, Jackson's Netherland Ranch. When the case came to trial in California in 2005, Jackson was facing charges of child molestation, abduction, and false imprisonment, and potentially he was looking at 18 years in prison. Wow, that would have been a totally different timeline, right? Because Jackson would have gone to prison for like 18 years. He wouldn't have got addicted to drugs and he'd probably still be alive. When was this? 2005? He'd just be getting out of prison right now! Wow, look at that. Oh no, 50, 60, 70. He'll be getting out of prison next year. Hey, that's not this world. That's an alternative timeline. The courtroom was closed to the media, so we were denied the chance to watch an all-star cast of witnesses in the defense box for Jackson, including Chris Tucker, Jay Leno, and then a 24-year-old Macaulay Culkin. What? I, I, this is a weird thing. Like, some American trials, they're like cameras and everything. It's like, oh my god, this is exciting! And then this one, they're like, absolutely not. And then the OJ trial comes along and they're like, that was televised, right? Famously. Weird. Jackson's behavior throughout the trial was typically erratic. Before stepping into court on the very first day, he paused to jump on top of his black SUV and perform a few dance moves for the adoring crowd who had gathered outside of the courthouse. He's like, hey, before I go in there to deal with this little child molestation charge, I'm going to moonwalk on top of my Escalade. And it's like, Jacko, what the f*** are you up to? This is serious, mate. You could be going in there and not coming out. Like, is that, I don't know if that's how it works. You probably, no, nah, this will charge you go to prison. They arrest you, go to prison, that's it, you're fucked. He was like, at least you get your, your bonds back, the three million dollars, which I'm sure served him a lot of good after like 15 years, 18 years in prison, whatever it was. He was actually running 21 minutes late on that first day, which didn't go down well with the judge, and in fact, punctuality would be a running problem for Jackson throughout the case. On the last day of testimony, he was over an hour late and eventually turned up in a pair of floral pajama bottoms. I'm pretty sure any non-VIP celebrity defendant would have been found in contempt of court. How was he not found in contempt of court? He's an hour late. Lock him up. Deny, uh, revoke his bond. Come on, what are you doing, judgey? Now, it goes without saying that Jackson had some pretty expensive lawyers on his side, but he would arguably still have to have the same triumphant result if been forced to apply for legal aid, and that's because the prosecution team appeared to be a bunch of hopeless buffoons. In one of the more bizarre segments of the trial, the entire courtroom spent hours gazing at big screen, which was boldly displaying images taken from Jackson's collection of pornographic magazines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's that got to do with this? There's so much porn! Look at this! Chicks with dicks! Oh my god! <laughs> it's true that Jackson's seized porn stash was pretty hefty, and slightly worryingly, it included a few of those artsy naturalist magazines which occasionally depicted child nudity. Uh-oh, don't be doing that! <laughs> What? Uh, why is that in your porn stash? It's like, okay, if you go on one of those like weird arty magazines, I'll be like, dude, it's weird. But okay. Like, maybe that was okay decades ago. I don't think that's cool now. <laughs> but to have it in with your porn collection, mate, is like, what are you up to? 
indeed. However, the vast majority of the stash was made up of adult heterosexual pornography, and all of it was perfectly legal, which kind of worked against the prosecuting prosecution's point that Jackson was sexually interested in young children. Flashing up a big screen image taken from titles such as Busty and Dover 50 wasn't really helping the prosecutor's case. Obviously, what are you doing? This is an incredibly high profile case. Couldn't you have put a better lawyer on this who actually thought about stuff for a second? Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? The Constitution says you do. Sticking with the pages of the porn magazines, Gavin Arvizo's younger brother, Star, was later led into the trap by defense when he identified a specific image taken from one of Jackson's issues of Barely Legal. Yes, that title does ring alarm bells, and he claimed that Jackson had shown the image to himself and his brother during one of their Neverland visits. In fact, that particular issue of Barely Legal hadn't been published until five months after the Arvizo brothers had paid their final visit. I feel like while having the magazine like barely legal is like indicative of like, I don't know, uh, is, is it? Is it anyway? But it's also like if you're the prosecution, it's right there in the title. It might be barely legal, but it's legal and the prosecution and, and the defense will be like, yo, bro, it says it right there in the title. Come on, <laughs> get him out of here. Free Jacko! But the biggest problem with the bumbling prosecution was their choice of main witness who went by the name of Janet Jackson. Though it wasn't Michael's sister, it was Gavin Arvizo's mother who just happened to share the same name. That's a hell of a coincidence. Janet gave long, rambling, hostile, and largely incoherent answers to the defense and had a nasty habit of snapping her fingers aggressively at the jury. <laughs> It's not going to go down well. You want the jury to like you, because they're going to vote on whether you, your, your mate is going to go to prison for the best part of two decades. She was painted as a mother who had a history of trying to extract money from celebrities and coaching her children to lie. Dude, that is not going to... That What are you doing calling this... this <laughs> the prosecution? You need to go to prison for being shitty <laughs> lawyers. The defense also produced evidence that Janet had committed welfare fraud in the past, which she was never later, for which she was later convicted, which is bad. But obviously, more indicative of not having her on the stand <laughs> is the fact that she has coached children to lie to extract money from celebrities. When you're in a trial about... Well, they're not trying to extract money from the celebrity, but you can bet they would afterwards, in like a separate civil case. Right? So what the f*** are you up to? It's believed by many that Janet effectively lost the case for the prosecution. Uh, the prosecution chose to call her. It's not like she just rolled up to the court and just started chatting away. She chose to be there. Uh, the prosecution chose her to be there, didn't they? Fucking clowns, mate, allegedly. The trial dragged on for four months and Jackson was ultimately found guilty. Uh, sorry, not guilty. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'd be a terrible jury foreman. They'd be like, uh, have the members of the jury reached a verdict? And I'd be like, yes, your honor, we have. Not. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. We crossed out not. I meant guilty. I meant guilty. He's guilty. He's guilty. Send him away. And the, the defendant will be just like, <laughs> you fucking dickhead. It. On all counts. I believe that until proven guilty, every man, woman, and child in this country is innocent. That dragged on for four months, and Jackson was ultimately found not guilty on all charges, although the allegations would continue to pile up, following him to his grave and beyond. I'm not well enough following him beyond his grave, because he's dead. Danny. I'm not sure we'll ever get a definitive answer to my original question. Phil Collins, the purveyor of great wisdom, more recently addressed the question with the suggestion that there's no smoke without fire. I don't think that's scientifically accurate, Phil, but this is one question that may keep on smoldering for decades to come. O.J. Simpson in the state of California. Finally, it would be almost criminal, wouldn't it, if we didn't mention O.J. Simpson in a video on famous celebrity trials, considering that his televised, yes it was, trial of 1995 is a contender for the most famous trial in history. I'm sure we all know the rough story, the former football running back and act- uh. The former football running back and actor was accused of the gruesome crime of stabbing to death his wife. Uh, not another one? Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly. The former football running back and actor was accused of the gruesome stabbing to death of his ex wife, Nicole Brown Simpson. <laughs> what is wrong with me today? I'm full of gas. My deepest, deepest apologies. 
The former football running back and actor was accused of the gruesome stabbing to death of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goodman in 1994. The prosecution must have felt that this was going to be a piece of piss, or at least a short trickle of blood. The DNA evidence included trails of blood belonging to OJ, Nicole, and Ron, which was found outside Nicole's front door where the murders took place. It was also found inside OJ's Ford Bronco and dripping ever further into OJ's own house a couple of miles away. He wasn't guilty of this, was he? But I mean, how the fuck not? Jesus Christ, allegedly. Um, and yet, over the course of the best part of a year, over 100 million viewers watched in fascination as OJ's lawyers, modestly named the Dream Team, and honestly, it, it's it's fr- it is it is modest because they were the they were the God Team, considering that he got off of this. Good Lord. Convinced the jury that the seemingly irrefutable evidence had been mishandled and the entire Los Angeles Police Department were racist. In the end, it largely came down to a pair of leather gloves. One of the bloodstained gloves had been found at the crime scene, while the other was picked up in OJ's back garden. <laughs> Jesus Christ, OJ. Could you have left more evidence? You need to you need to watch the casual criminalist, mate. Follow some of the rules. It's basic. It's basic stuff. And the matching pair presumably belonged to the murderer. But when OJ was invited to try them on in court, he struggled for around a minute whilst continually shrugging as if wordlessly to communicate, oh, well, these sure as hell don't fit. And as his lawyer later outlined in his closing arguments to the jury, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Who knew that it would be that easy? If they'd just got OJ to try the gloves on right at the beginning while ignoring all the other evidence, the jury could have taken a year off. As fears grew that a guilty verdict would incite a race riot, O.J. Simpson was eventually acquitted of all charges. At the time, polls showed that nearly two-thirds of African Americans supported the jury's decision, while a majority of white Americans felt that a false verdict had been reached in the interests of diffusing racial tensions. And I don't... It's it's dangerous territory, because if you haven't noticed, I'm I'm a white dude. Um, That's a fuck lot of evidence, my guys. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Some of those numbers have dramatically shifted since then. Just one year after the trial, a different jury reached a different verdict, and thankfully for the family of Ron Goldman, they didn't even have to cross the Atlantic. The untelevised civil trial in California in 1996 found O.J. Simpson to be responsible for the deaths of Nicole and Ron. There wasn't much in the way of additional evidence for this one, but in the original trial, a bloody footprint was found at the murder scene, and it was shown to match a size 12 Bruno Magli Lorenzo boot. O.J. couldn't argue that these didn't fit, as he was a size 12. 12, so instead he argued that he never owned a pair of these boots and would never wear such ugly ass shoes. Uh oh, are they later about to discover a picture of wearing them? That sounds like, you know, you're OJ Simpson, you're going to be photographed everywhere. And I, I'm, I've never heard of Maglio, whatever, or, you know, whoever it is, because I don't really care about fashion very much. I'm betting you buy those shoes, you're not just going to wear them around the house, mate. You're going to wear them out because you bought these expensive shoes and you're going to be paparazzi because you're OJ f-ing Simpson. So, uh, I'm going to guess there's a photo. A freshly discovered collection of 31 different photographs showed OJ mooching around in those ugly ass Bruno Magli Lorenzo boots prior to the murders. OJ, do you not think about things? For, or your legal team, who's apparently cracked, do they not, like, crack good, not like on crack? Do they not think about this for like three seconds before you open your stupid mouth? You're allegedly, in my opinion, stupid mouth. OJ may not have received a prison sentence, but at least he was ordered to pay over $33 million to the families of the victims, who would have also probably liked to have seen him in prison more than getting them. Mm. Would they, though? It's a lot of money, isn't it? Maybe they'd like both. Except that they barely received any of it as OJ swiftly moved to Miami in a surprisingly successful bid to avoid paying out. What the fuck? How does that work? He's not moved to like f***ing Belize. He's moved to Miami. It's in America. Just go get him. You have a federal thing that controls people in different countries called the f***ing FBI. I've seen this, those TV shows where the marshals go get people and bring them back and it's like, yo, OJ, bitch, where's the f***ing money? They don't speak like this because they're like government people. But, you know, they'll come for you. What the fuck? Do it. Go get the money. How was that work? How did that work? In later years, OJ almost appeared to be relishing his fame as the murderer who got away with it. Oh my god, the next thing he's going to do is like write a bloody book about how he did the crime, isn't he? That would be the only thing more insane than what we've seen so far. 
Spoiler alert. In 2007, he accepted $600,000 from Reagan Books and News Corp to put his name on a ghost-written book entitled If I Did It. The book was a hypothetical account of how OJ would have committed the murders if he was guilty of them, and OJ also filmed an accompanying two-part promotional interview for Fox in which he described how he would have gone about it. Well, it's not rocket science, OJ, is it? There was enough evidence that we know how you went about it, didn't we? And I mean, this is, you went about it badly, allegedly, if you did it. I mean, which you didn't, legally, of course, but civilly you did. It's complicated, isn't it? It's not. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Thankfully, both the book and the TV interview were cancelled by News Corp when they suddenly realized that the project may have been ill-considered. Well, it's not that ill-considered. I'm sure it's going to sell very, very well. But the book was given a new lease of life and a tweaked title in 2007 when the rights were awarded to the family victim to the family of victim Ron Goldman. The word IF on the book cover was now hidden away in tiny letters so that at first glance, the full title reads, I did it, Confessions of the Killer. What the f***, man? I knew this, but it still blows my mind. OJ did eventually serve nine years in prison from 2008 when he was convicted of armed robbery, assault, and kidnapping at a Las Vegas hotel. Mate, you, you allegedly got away with murder. Why are you do don't do more crimes, man? So whilst his fans may not be happy that we can now officially call O.J. Simpson a convicted jailbird, the cap clearly fits better than the leather than the leather gloves ever did. Yes, this has been an episode of Brain Blaze. I hope you liked it. If you did, smash that like button. If you didn't, there's a dislike button that doesn't do anything anymore. So uh, enjoy that. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Some, but who the cares? My dog stepped on a bee. We went to the vet. <laughs>